Hello, welcome to Hour of Dominion. You are blessed. Expect a miracle this hour. The power of God through his word will empower you to live a life of dominion over your circumstances and rule in the midst of your enemies. You are blessed. The power of thoughts, part two. In our last episode, we've been dealing with our thoughts are powerful. How powerful are thoughts? And I start at point number six. What you think of yourself or your circumstances will eventually become a physical reality. If you think failure, you have failure. If you think success, you have success. You can't think failure and have success. You can't think success and have failure. Man is a product of his thoughts. You cannot think failure and expect to have success. Next, if you are always occupied with the thought of sickness, you will not live a healthy life, or you will not have a healthy life. If you are always occupied with thought of sickness and disease, you will not have a healthy life. Rather, you will be sick. Then number seven. Thoughts have constructive or destructive capabilities. Thoughts have constructive or destructive capabilities. You see teenagers now, children shooting in some institutions in the world. They are just playing out what they watch on the tellies. The violent pictures the violent, uh, you know, movies they watch, they play it out. Because thoughts are powerful. Thoughts can be destructive or constructive. Thoughts have constructive or destructive capabilities. Thoughts affect our emotions. Thoughts affect our emotions. And eventually our life. Negative thoughts can hold people in bondage. Thought can hold people in bondage and thought can lead to the freedom of people. A lot of people are in bondage because of negative thoughts. A lot of people are captives of their thoughts. I declare that from today you will not be a victim of destructive thoughts again in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God answers our thoughts God does not only answer prayers, he answers our thoughts. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do a seeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. So God answers our thoughts equally as he answers our prayers. So a lot of people pray positive prayers and cancel the effect of the prayer with negative thoughts. Because God is equally committed to both. That is your prayers and your thoughts. What are God's thoughts towards us? Let's look at God's thoughts towards us. That will help us build our faith. That will help us think positive thoughts. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And I will put it this way. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thoughts are powerful. And God's thought towards us is to give us a hope and a future. To give us an expected end. This thought of peace. Thought of success. Let's look at God's order of intervention in our lives. Sin must precede victory and possession. Sin must precede success and prosperity. Remember, thoughts are pictures in the mind. Pictures that are formed in the mind. So before God will intervene in your life, you must have the picture of the world you want to future. 
in Genesis chapter 13 verse 15, God said, For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So you must first settle what you think before God can step in to help you. You can't expect God to, God to give you success and you allow your thoughts to be occupied with negative pictures. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. God told Joshua, see! Now look at it. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see! That's capital letter C, S, C. Now, was it that Joshua was not seen? His optical eyes were open. Joshua saw the wall, fortified, impregnable wall. But God told him, see beyond the wall. See what I want to bring to pass. See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. See it first. Because this wall you are seeing is going to collapse. It's going to be level, but you must see it first. So Joshua saw the wall of Jericho level. Joshua saw the obstacle level, and God brought it to pass. So for you to have success in life, for you to have victory and, and prosperity, you must first see beyond your circumstances. See beyond the apparent visible situation. See, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Glory to God. Now take this formula. Imagination plus expectation are vital element of faith. And God honors our faith. It is a divine principle. You can't receive until you see. And you can receive what you think, see, and expect. It is a divine principle. You can receive what you think, see, and expect. I want to talk to us now on how to engage supernatural forces through our thoughts. How to rule our world through our thoughts. How to effect a change around your world. How to change your world through your thoughts. If thoughts are powerful, then we must be responsible to the thoughts we allow into our hearts. God's word says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. So it's your responsibility and mine to guard our heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So, the birds may fly over your head, but it's your responsibility not to allow the bird build a nest on your head. Imagination plus expectation are vital element of faith, and God honors our faith. It is a divine principle. You can receive what you think, see, and expect. Don't forget this. It's a divine principle. Anything you want in your life, see it first. In other words, imagine it, expect it, and it will come to pass. How to engage supernatural forces through our thoughts? If thoughts are powerful, if thoughts are, could be constructive or destructive, then it's our responsibility to guard our thoughts, to guard our minds from letting negative, destructive thoughts enter, but allowing positive thoughts to come in. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So that means, garrison your heart. Guide it. Don't allow the thoughts come in. Now, you say, Pastor, how do I do that? Thoughts come in and overwhelm me. How do I handle Overwhelming thoughts. I'll tell you. Number one, give your life to Jesus. I'll tell you the reason. You can't be in the kingdom of darkness and fight against it. It's not possible. You can't bail yourself from a police station 
Somebody free must bear you. Somebody that's, that is not in cell must bear you. Everyone that has not received Jesus as his Lord and Savior is in darkness. We have only two kingdoms in the world. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the kingdom of God. We are God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. is in charge. The kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of Satan. Negative thoughts come from the kingdom of darkness. Destructive thoughts. People have committed suicide because of negative thoughts. People have committed terrible sin because of negative thoughts. Like a man going to sleep with a daughter. That's a negative thought. The act of such incest did not occur when the physical act occurred. It occurred in the mind first. Thought have kept people in bondage. Thought have destroyed lives. Negative thoughts. I mean, so for you to be in charge of your life, you must shift position. You must move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Then, you can exercise control and authority against the kingdom of darkness. So you hand over your life to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I receive your work you did for me. You died for my sins. You love me so much that you came in and died. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I receive your finished work on the cross of Calvary for me. Save my soul, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. And write my name in your book of life. If you make that prayer now, you're born again. Then the warfare starts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next is to renew your mind. Number two, things you do to control your thoughts and channel it towards productive, successful life is to renew your minds with the word of God. Renew your minds with the word and your thoughts will be transformed positively. I'll give you two scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, that's, that's it now, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I love this. So, you change your mindset by the word of God. The word of God is the only authentic, powerful instrument to change the mindset of man. If you want to rule your world, if you want to control the negative thought or stop the negative thought coming to you without divine help, which comes from the word of God, is practically impossible. The forces you are fighting are so powerful. They are super human beings. They are supernatural. You have the negative supernatural. You have the positive supernatural. God dwells in the realm of the positive supernatural. Satan dwells in the realm of the negative supernatural. Our physical bodies, our mindset can't stop negative thoughts from the devil except by the power of the Holy Ghost through renewing our minds from the word of God. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So you notice that when you meditate on the word, when you take in the word of God, ability of this negative thought to rule and put in bondage is disabled. Those negative thoughts just give way. Because when you take light into a room that is dark, as soon as light comes in, darkness don't struggle with light. It disappears. So when the word of God that is light, spirit, comes into your spirit, man, comes and rule and change your mindset, every negative thought that is released is disabled. 
But it does not come automatically also. That takes us to the next point. Number two. This is where responsibility is put into action. Always cast down negative imagination, negative thoughts that show up. Don't waste time to do that. You don't do that with your thoughts. We don't pull down negative thoughts with thoughts. No. No. That's where a lot of folks make mistakes, even in, in Christendom, in, 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 in the kingdom of God. You don't pull down negative thoughts with thoughts. Or put it this way. You don't pull down negative thoughts with positive thoughts. No. You open your mouth and cast it down. I'll show you from the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 beginning. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Watch this. Casting down imaginations. Casting down negative thoughts. That's what it means. Thoughts are pictures formation. Image formation in our minds. Casting down imaginations. That means negative imagination. He said, I cast you down. Say it after me. Say, I cast you down negative thoughts. Then you move further. And every high thing that resulted itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing into captivity. I love this. Every thought to the business of Christ. I take that verse 5 again. Watch this. Watch this. This is powerful. This is awesome. This is awesome. This will help you. This is where you take responsibility. This is where you rule your world. Now listen. Listen. Casting down imaginations. I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. When you're in Christ Jesus, you have power to cast down imaginations. And every high thing that resulted itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity, you arrest the thought. You say, you negative thought of failure, you negative thought of fear, I in the name of Jesus and I cast you down. You negative thought of failure, you negative thought of fear, of failure, fear of untimely death, I bind you and I take you captive to the obedience of Christ. I cast you down, negative imaginations, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone now. As you say that, by faith, the thoughts are arrested. I'm bringing into captivity Arrest those negative thoughts. Or they will destroy your life. To the obedience of Christ. Glory to God. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When the obedience is fulfilled. This is the cross of the matter. This is how to rule your world. And you notice as you do that. If that thought repeats. You keep casting it down. Releasing your faith. The peace of God that passes human understanding. Will rule your heart and mind. Number four. Train your thoughts to function in line with God's higher thoughts. Train your thoughts to function in line with God's higher thoughts. And you'll be greatly successful and prosperous in life. Look at Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, say the Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, say the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And you know, God's word is God's thought in print. So when you meditate on God's word, your mindset and negative thought inside you will be disabled and destroyed and be replaced with God's higher thoughts. And you start having results in the order of God. You start having results that is mind-blowing. You start having results of success, of victory, of health, and joy, and happiness in life. Glory to God. No one can have joy, happiness, without learning and training 
is mine to allow positive thoughts. No one can have a beautiful life, a joyful life, a happy life without taking control of his or her thoughts. Now number five, when you are studying and meditating on the scriptures, ask the Holy Spirit to help you imagine or see visions of the future you want to future. I take it again. When you are studying and meditating on the scriptures, invite the Holy Spirit. Consciously invite the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's the writer of the Bible. He's the author of the word. For men of God speak and they wrote the word through inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So invite the Holy Ghost and ask him to help you imagine, to envision, visualize greatness, prosperity, healing, health, in the light of the scriptures. And you will be blessed. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, there's a powerful word here that I want to leave with you as I conclude. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. That's it. When you're meditating on the Bible, the Word of God is a spiritual mirror. You see what the Word says, you visualize yourself in the light of the Word. He said, fear not, for I am with thee. For instance, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 said, fear not, for I am with thee. Be, now, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee. Here I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Here I will help thee. I will strengthen thee, and I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You picture yourself there. Then the word says, I will make you famous and honored all over the world. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 20. Message Bible. You picture yourself that God is going to make you famous and honored all over the world. That's how to visualize the future you want to future from the word of God. And remember, you ask the Holy Ghost to open your eyes that you may behold wondrous things out of the word or out of the law. Psalm 119 verse 18. Now, number six, apply kingdom thinking syllables. I'll conclude with this. There is a kingdom pattern of thinking, or spelled out in the Word of God, is found in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. The thought you are allowed to enter your mind, is it true? If it's not true, cast it out. And to judge whether it's true, you must go to the word of God. Whatsoever things are honest, is it honest? Whatever things are just, is it just? Whatever things are pure, is it pure? Whatever things are lovely, is it lovely? Whatever things are of good report, will it bring good report? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. God bless you. I believe you are blessed by this episode. I look forward to seeing the hand of God in your life. I look forward to getting testimonies that your life has changed. That joy and happiness have filled your heart since you listen to this message. That success and breakthrough is the experience you are having because you have trained yourself to think positive thoughts, faith-filled thoughts, thoughts that are ruled by the Word of God, thoughts that are influenced by the Word of God, which brings results. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. Father, I pray for my viewers that you empower them to take control of their thoughts. That you empower them to rule their world through faith-filled thoughts. That you empower them to think in line with your word. That you empower them to cast down every ima negative imaginations and thoughts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I bind you. And I cast you out of this life. 
And I command that the power of God rule their minds and disable every negative thought in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for the sick, the afflicted, those who need miracles. Precious Father, I thank you for the healing of your children. Now be healed. Now be set free. I bind the spirit of infirmities. I cast you out of that life. Now be made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Headache be gone. Ovariances be gone. Barrenness be crushed. Terminable disease be crushed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. The deaf hear, the dumb speak, the blind see now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole. Every cancer in your body be destroyed. Every terminable disease be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be made whole. Amen. If you made this prayer, now do what you couldn't do. Stand up from that wheelchair. Drop that walking aid. Raise your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus, I'm healed. And you see every trace of symptom disappear. In Jesus' name. If this message have blessed you, send your text messages to 0802-322-1086 or 0706-381-3013. Email us at info at lifegatepowerministries.org. Worship with us at Dominion Cathedral, Lifegate Power Ministries, Number 90 Stadium Road, Rumamasi, Port Harcourt. Worship with us on Sundays, first service, 7.30 a.m. and second service, 9.30 a.m. Wednesdays, midweek service, 6 p.m. For counseling and prayers, call these numbers, 706 381 802 322-1086 or 0805-201-3598 God bless you.